Hi everyone, it's Rendon with TJ Free, and this is a part two video. In the first video, we built a computer that's going to be our new media computer here at the video studio. In this video, we're going to be writing Linux Mint to this USB drive. Uh, we're gonna download the image, and we're gonna write it um, to this USB drive, and then we're gonna take it back over to the new computer and install it on the hard drive. So the first thing I wanna do is plug this into the USB port. This plugs into the back of my computer. I'm doing this on Windows, um, but you can do this on Mac and Linux as well. In fact, I have a Linux computer right down to the left of this computer. Usually I, I run Linux to do this, but in this case, since many of you are going to be using Windows to move over to Linux, I thought I'd do a demonstration um, using Windows. So let's hop over and see how to do that. So first let's search for the Linux Mint uh, image. So just search Linux Mint on your favorite search engine. Uh, and then this will come up. I'll include the link in the description of the video as well, but it's linuxmint.com. And then we'll click on downloads. And then we're just gonna download the latest version. Right now that's 20.1, but this might be different depending on when you're um, watching this. So you can download um, a direct link here. I click on the cinnamon. Um, we can download directly from any of these sources here. Or if you'd like, you can click on the torrent. If you have torrent software installed and you can download it um, via torrent. But I'm just gonna go here and we'll just click on just about any of these will work. So we'll download this one right here. And that's gonna start our downloads. Looks like it'll take about 30 minutes on my connection. So we'll let this download, I'll pause the video. But before we do that, we need one more thing because this is gonna download uh, either a .iso or a .iso uh, yeah, file, which is an image file. It's gonna have all the files in there for the operating system that we need. We need a way to write these files once they're downloaded to the USB drive. We can't just drag and drop this .iso file. It won't work has to be written a special way. And to do that, we're gonna use some special software called Etcher. So I'm gonna open up a new tab and search for Etcher. And that's going to be this um, right here. It's, et it's a, oh, Balena.io. That's the company that does Etcher. And so I'll include a link to this as well. There's different software you can use, but I like this one for writing. And this also runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So we're just gonna click here, Download for Windows. And this will download, we'll click Save File. And this is just a .exe file. So once these are both done downloading, um, I'll come back to the video and we'll use these to write the data to this USB drive. Okay, those files are done downloading now. So this ISO file looks sort of like this. Um, the icon may look a little different for you, but just find it in your downloads directory or wherever you downloaded it to. Um, we're gonna launch this Etcher program. And so, let me drag this in. It looks like this. And what this is gonna do, I'll just click Agree. Um, it's not installing on our computer, it's just running, it's an executable file. So this is gonna run, and any file that we put in, so we're gonna say, uh, what, what file do we want to write? So we'll click uh, find the file, and I'll navigate to my downloads directory here. So I select this .iso, whatever it, it happens to be, and then we're gonna go select target. So that's where we're writing it to. So we're writing it to this USB drive that's plugged into the computer right now. So I'll go select target, um, and we just wanna verify that it's the right one. And we'll click this checkbox right here. This is called general U-Disk in my case. Now, this is important. If you have multiple disks on your computer, multiple like an SD card from a camera or multiple USB, or even possibly just like a, an internal disk in your computer, it might show up here. And anything that you select, uh, it will, so it shows like two hidden, for example. If we click this hidden, it shows us, I have an 840 solid state and I have a 500 gig spin drive. If I were to write to those, it would erase everything on there. So make sure you select the correct disk. Um, make sure that you verify that it is the USB drive that you have plugged in. So in my case, I'll go select one, and then we just click this flash button. So we click flash, and this will take a little time. Uh, it takes about uh, anywhere from five to 10 minutes maybe. Uh, it'll write it to the USB drive, and then it'll also verify that it wrote correctly, and it'll come up and say success or failed. Uh, we'll come back when it's done being flashed. Looks like this is just finishing up validating right now, so it's just checking to make sure that it wrote correctly. Um, sometimes you'll have an issue with certain brands of USB drives, so if this is giving you problems writing or if when you go over to boot on your computer, if it's not booting like, the way you thought it would, you might need to just rewrite it to a different, um, like a different size USB drive or a different brand drive. These drives can be a little bit temperamental sometimes. And I will say you can also use this software, this Etcher, to write um, like Raspberry Pi images or to write even like the Windows installer, you can um, write to this. So any type of image, you can use this Etcher. It's a great tool for writing images to USB drives like this. So now that it's finished, it says it's complete. 
we can um, close out of this. So we'll just go ahead and pull this USB drive out. So we'll take this jump drive now and I'll plug it into the USB port on the computer. I try to plug it into a port that's non-USB 3.0, like a blue, not one of the blue ports. Um, sometimes the 3.0 can have issues. So, um, and it, again, if you're having trouble um, getting it to boot from the USB drive, this one just did it automatically. Um, but if you're having trouble, you can go into the BIOS and change some of the boot settings to say boot from the USB drive, or you can press one of the F keys on the keyboard and select the boot device to boot from. And if it's just not showing up at all or you're having trouble, try a different port on the computer, a different USB port. And if it's still not working, um, like I mentioned, you might need to just go back and reflash it to that same drive or find a different USB drive and reflash it. Um, so that's what I would try, some of those different things. And if all else fails, you can always just Google and look up different things, look up your specific motherboard or your specific laptop, whatever you're trying to write to, and figure out how to do, how to get into the boot mode and, and boot from, it's basically boot from USB drive is what we're doing. So this USB installer is a live version of the Linux Mint operating system. And we, what we can see here is, it's actually like a full working desktop. So we have things like a calculator, you know, we have different programs that we can actually come in here and use. Uh, you know, as if it was just like a regular computer. Um, and I say that because it also has a good tool that you might want to use is this disks um, to check and make sure your the disk that you're installing to is there and present. So this shows that we have a one terabyte disk already installed. We have a 256 gigabyte solid state already installed. And we could format these and kind of create partitions if we needed to before actually doing the install. And in this case, my, my SSD already has some data on it. So I could go in um, here to devices in the file explorer. This is all the data that's on this solid state drive. And so I can get in here and see, this is like an old install of Ubuntu. And I can just double check and make sure I don't have any files on here that I, that I am gonna be writing over. But I already checked that. So in this case, I'm just gonna come over here and go to install Linux Mint. And it just says, select your, the language. And from this point, it's actually pretty straightforward. It just walks you through you select what keyboard you're using. Um, I'm gonna install these multimedia codecs. Some of them aren't open source, they're like third party. So you may or may not want to do that. So I'm gonna say yes on this. It can unmount the, part the partitions that it's installing to. And then it asked me, so it detected there's an old version of Ubuntu on this disk that I'm trying to install to. So what I'm gonna say is erase it and install Linux Mint, but you could install alongside. Sometimes this will say there's a version of Windows on that disk and you can install and have Linux Mint run alongside of your Windows uh, computer. So at, and then when you turn it on, you'll just use the keys on your keyboard to choose what operating system you want to boot into, um, which a lot of people do that to, do, to create a dual boot system. So this just says what disk you want to install onto. I'm gonna install onto this SSD is what I'm gonna do and not the one terabyte drive for now. So we'll do that, we'll click install now. And then this is just gonna install the files, it says um, it's just going to write, tell me what partitions it's going to create. So it's creating two partitions on this drive right now. And then we can select our time zone. And we put in some information here about the computer. So the, we choose a computer name and we choose a password. And I usually set this to log in automatically since my studio is fairly secure. But if you're worried about other people logging in, you might want to require a password every time you log in. So I'll put in some information here. And then we see it's just copying the files over. If we want to see more about these files, we can click here and it just tells us exactly what it's doing. This whole process should take less than 10 minutes. So we'll pause the video until that's done. We're just about done with this Linux Mint install. I'm going to take this off. Some people like to watch these things be peeled off. Um, and I'm going to put this case on since we're just about done, or this cover on the case. And this is a, like a plexiglass, it's not a, not a tempered glass, so it's not super heavy. I like cases that have these screws that you can just do with your fingers. It makes it nice to just, if you have to quickly get in and check something or disconnect something, um, it's kind of nice. But yeah, that looks pretty good. So you can get in here and peek and see, especially when you have like some, you know, RGB, different fans and different light up things. It can be kind of cool to just peek in and see what's going on. Looks like we're just about finished copying over the files for the operating system. And now it says, do you want to continue testing? So, or do you want to restart? So I'm gonna say restart now. And then it's going to pop up with a message that says, remove the installation media. So pull out the USB stick. So I'm gonna just pull that out of the USB port. 
We've got the USB drive pulled out. I'll just hit enter now. This should now boot into our newly installed Linux Mint on our solid state drive. If it doesn't, we can get into the BIOS and manually tell it which a drive to boot to. Um, but this looks like it is. We see the symbol here, so it's booting up. And now we have a new um, operating system on our computer. So this is a good start for our media computer. So that's a quick look at installing Linux Mint on a fresh system. Um, these steps will also work if you're installing on a laptop or an existing computer, like with Windows. In the next video, we're going to hop over to the screencast, and we're going to be installing video editors and image editors, animation programs, graphic design programs, and just get everything up and going so that we can use this program here in the studio in a professional capacity. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and we'll catch you in the next video.